Hey everybody, Autoblog senior producer Christopher McGraw here. I'm excited today for a few different reasons. First off, um, it is September, which means it is almost fall. It is a nice 52 degrees out right now. Uh, I'm actually like a little chilly, which is a nice break from the 98 degree temperatures we've been seeing out here in Colorado. Second of all, I'm in the Ford F-150 Lightning. Um, I'm a huge fan of pickup trucks. I'm also a huge fan of electric vehicles, and since I haven't driven the Rivian yet, uh, this is one of the first that I have driven. I've driven the Hummer as well, um, but this is the first time that I've gotten like a week-long seat time in an electric pickup truck. This thing's got all the bells and whistles. It's a Platinum, and it has been a blast to drive, but can you sleep in it? First things first, let's turn this thing on. Look at, boom, on, that's it. That's all we got. Turn down the sound here. I love it, it's so quiet. And I'm gonna open up this sunroof, brighten things up a bit in here. It is massive, so that's halfway, there we go. Massive sunroof, really like that. Really like being able to look up at the stars at night. Another thing that I like is because this is electric, you don't have to worry about getting carbon monoxide poisoning. So if you're super hot out or super cold out, you can actually run the AC or heat. There will be a drain on the battery, so you have to factor that into consideration. But it's something that you can't really do safely in an internal combustion vehicle. So that's great. Another thing is this F-150 has lie flat seats. So let's see how these feel. All right. So this is the lie flat seat in the Ford F-150. And while it does go quite a bit further back than other vehicles, I would not say that this is something that is gonna be super comfortable to sleep in long-term. Um, I have, uh, just story time, there was a time uh, when one of my old coworkers and I, we were shooting a Volkswagen video at uh, Yellowstone and Grand Teton National Parks, and we got up super early to hit the uh, see Old Faithful right as the sun was coming up, and by the time we were in Grand Teton around 1 p.m. at Horseshoe Bend, we were really tired, we just needed like a quick 15-20 minute nap uh, to recharge and so this is how we slept was lean the seats back I think that these seats would be perfect for that being able to lean all the way back is really nice um, but full night sleep don't think so but you can definitely look up at the stars through this huge sunroof assuming that it's a clear night so lie flat seats good better than most but not a perfect solution. Another thing that I'd like about this F-150, doesn't really have anything to do with sleep, but it does have to do with camping. So you press a button here by the shift knob and the shift knob will actually fold flat. And then you can open this up. They call this like a work station. It's nice and flat. Uh, I think it'd be great for eating on if you have you know, put a bowl here, plate here, whatever. Um, it's just like a nice little table inside the vehicle. Again, not a perfect solution. There's a lot of cracks and crevices here that can get filled with crap. Um, the first F-150 that I had that had this, actually when I opened it up, it was full of crumbs, which was not great. Um, so not ideal, probably be better off just having a table at your campsite. But if you don't have a campsite and you don't have a table, this is better than nothing. It's better than just eating something on your lap where you can drop it on the seats, get it on the steering wheel, get it on your pants, all that. So having this, better than nothing. Another thing I like is that we got a ton of cup holders here. We got one, two, three, four. And then we got plenty of space in the door, though none of the space in the door looks like it's specific two cup holders. Um, so pretty good. Again, not ideal. 
All right, now looking at this, take the little tray out here. There's a lot of space and a lot of USB ports, which I like. There's two USB ports in here in the storage area. Also, there's just a ton of room in that storage area. You can fit easily a dozen cans of pop. Um, you can fit whatever you want in there. You could probably even fit a small cooler in there uh, and just throw some ice and not worry about it leaking. Um, we also have two USB ports up here. So plenty of USB ports up in the front. Though, unless you're sleeping up front, the USB ports up here are not gonna matter so much. But I do just like having the space. And it's lockable. It's a lock on the front. So if you have your valuables in the truck, you can lock the truck, you can lock this portion, and then you're good to go. Also has a lockable glove box and some secondary storage up here as well, which I also like. Storage is big when you're sleeping in your car. You gotta put all your stuff somewhere. Um, some more power, we got a 12 volt here, and then an AC 120 volt here. This is not the only AC plug on this vehicle, so we'll get to that in a little bit, but it's great to have AC up front in the cabin. All right, let's move to the back of the cab and see if you can sleep in the rear. All right, so now we're in the rear. So seats are down. Let's do a quick measurement with the seats down. It's not completely flat. It kind of leans into the back here, which isn't awful. I'd rather it lean that way while I sleep on it than the other way, but flat would be better. So we're talking 56 inches. So um, just a little shy of five feet. So if you curl up, you can sleep laying down. Wouldn't be bad you know, while somebody else is driving on maybe a long road trip to catch some Z's, but not, again, not ideal for a full night's sleep. But if we push these up, maybe we can sleep on the floor a little bit better. All right, so seats fold up really easily as you've seen, but we have this like storage area, really great for organizing your stuff underneath the seat, I think, um, but not great if you wanna sleep on top of it. So fairly easy, press that down and then fold it flat and then you can actually lock it in place there. Um, and that'll work on either side, I really like that. You don't have to walk around, you don't have to do it with both switches. It's got one on either side and both work. Uh, so that gives us a much flatter, flatter uh, spot to sleep. It's not completely flat with a sleeping pad, depending on how thick your sleeping pad is. If you get a thick one, this probably won't be as big of a deal, but if you're working with a thinner one, it might be a bit of a pain. Let's measure the width of this area from like the center console got to this piece of plastic. We got 30 inches. So that's not too bad. So about the width of like a skinny doorway um, should be big enough width wise for people to sleep. Uh, what about length wise? So I'm going to measure just from where it drops off here. So this isn't actually all the way to the door yet. So if I'm measuring that, it's right around 56, 57 inches. If we go all the way to the door, we're talking at most 64, 65 inches with the doors closed. Um, some of that space will be taken up by this part of the door. So with the doors closed, you're looking at right around five feet, maybe just a couple inches more. Um, I myself am five foot seven and uh, most of humanity is uh, bigger than that. So unless you're coming in right around five feet, you're gonna have to curl up a little bit to sleep back here. That being said, with the sunroof and with the seats moved, front seats moved up and this up, this does feel a lot bigger um, of a space. It's not gonna be the most comfortable with this hard plastic being on another level. Um, I do love this plush carpet, this like, I feel like I could sleep on, give me a pillow and I could sleep on this by itself. I don't even need a sleeping pad, but this part will mess you up a little bit. So again, the cabin is not ideal. And that's my problem with pickup trucks because they, you can't really sleep inside of them very easily. And when you sleep in the bed, again, you are stuck outside. 
uh, unless you have a tent which is not sleeping in a car um, you're going to be open to all the elements animals etc so sleeping in a truck difficult not impossible um, i i think you can get a good night's sleep in here if you're not that tall but you won't be able to stretch out still way better than nothing and having the lie flat seats um, you know somebody could sleep here somebody could if you put this down you could sleep on the bench and then the two people up front could lie flat so you could actually fit a fair amount of people in here if you really really needed to um, there was a situation when i was camping once uh, where there was grizzly bear activity and um, we were not allowed to sleep in our tents because the bears were roaming through the uh, through the campsite and so what we ended up having to do is sleep inside the vehicle and um, we would brought a bunch of stuff so even though we were in a, a larger we were in a nissan pathfinder at the time uh, we did have to sleep in the seats um, just because the vehicle was full of stuff uh, so at that moment i would have loved to have had lie flat seats so um, better than say the uh, sierra that we tested earlier because these seats do lie flat um, but not really all that different on the inside as far as space to sleep. Uh, other things I wanna talk about, we got more charging here. We got a USB-C and a regular USB. Got another 12 volt here. And then we have another AC outlet. And again, this vehicle can be on while you are in it and you don't have to worry about the carbon monoxide. So um, you can charge stuff. Uh, and I love, we have two 120 volt AC plugs inside of this vehicle. Uh, and that is not all of them as we will get to in a minute. So um, there is a lot going on in this vehicle. And so far it's definitely the best truck we've tested for sleeping in. Um, but let's go to the bed and see if it's any better back there. All right. Now we're in the bed of the pickup truck, the thing that is, like I've said before, named after what you sleep in at night, which for trucks is um, ironic because it's not the best thing to sleep in. Um, first off, uh, we have this spray in bed liner, which is really nice if you're gonna be doing work stuff with your vehicle, don't have to worry about it getting scratched. Um, the thing I don't like when sleeping in it, if you have a a bigger sleeping pad it's no problem but if you have a thinner one these ridges here are, are gonna be a problem you're gonna definitely feel them on your spine if you're lying on your back or your hips if you're lying on your side um, I'm not a huge fan of that uh, but again this isn't made for sleeping in so I totally get why they're there uh, if you have a thicker pad like I said won't be as much of an issue um, this bed isn't the longest bed that um, there is. So let's uh, do some measurements and see what we're talking about. If you do find yourself wanting to sleep open air, looking up at the stars, don't have to worry too much about animals or weather and you wanna sleep in the back of your truck, let's see what we're talking about here. We're gonna do diagonally, cause that's gonna be the longest and I'm gonna do diagonally to where the, um, if the tailgate was closed, that's we'll, where we'll be. So all the way there in the corner. All right, we're at seven feet, just about five inches. So almost seven and a half feet. So unless you're playing in the NBA, you'll have no problem lying diagonally. Uh, if the bed is open, even if you are playing in the NBA, you'll have no problem lying diagonally. Um, you just might have to position yourselves a little bit in between the wheel wells here. Um, lengthwise, so not diagonal, say you have a couple people uh, we're not quite at six feet. In fact, we're right at my height, which is five foot seven, uh, which is a little surprising. Um, you know, five and a half feet. It's a five and a half foot bed. No big deal there, um, but not ideal for sleeping in. You got two people who are six feet. You're going to have to curl up quite a bit. It's actually not a whole lot more room than there was inside of the truck and when you're inside you're at least out of the elements um, that being said if you have the tailgate open again 
seven foot eight plus you can let your feet dangle so you're not going to really be having any issues there width wise i'm going to do both the widest part and the narrowest part Let's see if i can get my measuring tape there we go so at its widest point so at its widest point it's almost as wide as it is long so it's kind of funny to think about if you're looking from overhead overhead um, this truck bed is actually uh, square in shape and then at its narrowest point we're talking just over four feet so not a ton of space in the bed to lay one thing that this bed does have is pro power on board so we have a 240 volt 30 amp ac outlet here and then two 120 volts underneath there and then we open up the third one and we got two more so if you're at a campsite and you don't need the range from this lightning say there's a charger close by you're going to pull up to grab some lunch at the diner next door or whatever um, you can use the pro power on board to power anything you can have a campsite like tom haverford in parks and rec if uh, if you'd like so that is super handy so we're talking four 120 volt ac outlets plus a 240 volt back here and we have another two 120 volt ac outlets inside of the truck so as far as power goes this truck has got it all so i'm um, doing really well there we have one last spot to show you in this truck it's something that the gmc sierra did not have because there was an engine in the way and that is the frunk can you sleep in the frunk so the obvious answer is no you can't sleep in the frunk but let's take a look at it anyway use the key fob hit it twice beeps really loudly opens up automatically And having a frunk is very nice for a variety of reasons. First of all, it's just more storage. Um, another thing, we have another four 120 volt AC outlets right here, as well as two more USB outlets, which I love. We also, if you lift this up, have more storage underneath. So that's where you can store charging cable and whatnot. And we got a mesh net right here. Plus it's fairly large. Width wise, we're sitting at about 44 inches. Depth wise, 28 inches. So you can fit a lot in here. And I know I said you can't sleep in here, but I am going to hop in and see what it's like if I were to try. Ooh definitely not the most comfortable but i could lay in here and have this shut and be in here i'm not going to say no problem it's definitely going to be a problem but i could actually fit in here um, which is why they have this button here so you can press it and get out if somebody kidnaps you and throws you in the front of your f-150 lightning take my shoes off while i'm in here so see sitting in here totally easy it's actually not uncomfortable i think two people can sit in here no problem tailgating and you can throw a cooler in here whatnot you can hook up a tv because there's so much power um, at that point you're definitely glamping instead of camping but to each their own so what are we talking about here we're talking about a an all-electric pickup truck one thing we didn't talk about is that because it's all electric, it's going to be better for the environment. Keeping the environment intact is a great way to keep our campsites looking great. Um, so that's definitely a plus here as well. Just tons of storage. Tons of storage from up front near the driver's and passenger seat to the front, obviously the bed, uh, and underneath the rear seat. Just tons and tons of storage. Um, though not all of it is useful in a sleeping setting. Power on board. If you don't need the range, which that is a big if, um, the power on board, super helpful. You don't want to be having to worry about draining it though. So just have to be aware of where you're at power wise. But yeah, four outlets in the front, 
four 120 plus one 240 in the bed, as well as two more 120 inside of the cabin. Huge. But ultimately, there is nowhere to sleep inside where I can stretch out like I could in the Land Rover or the Range Rover or really uh, most full-size three-row SUVs. So that's gonna knock it a bit there. So overall, I'm gonna give this a 3.4 out of five Z's. Not bad, really not bad for a pickup truck, one that's not meant for camping. It'd be a great base for overlanding if you're not going very far. Um, that being said, overlanding is all like being about self-sufficient, so that's where the electricity is gonna be a bit of a knock. The range there isn't gonna quite do it like you know a bigger internal combustion, maybe a diesel pickup, but it's a great base for camping. Maybe just not the greatest thing to sleep in.